And so this, is, this has to do with flows, the F, C for circulation, A for accumulation, and the P in the center of this triangle stands for power. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is the, the general flow of the, the, the talk. So I'm going to talk about each one of these general ideas in turn, and then I'm going to pick out two specific elements within this uh, relationship that deal with the Olympic Games in Rio. Okay, so flows. So we kind of all know what flows are. Uh, very diverse authors have written about cities of flows, the way that water flows through a city, um, information flows, people, the, the daily flow of traffic, uh, the commute can be considered a flow, but also natural flows. Um, architects talk about the flow of air through a city, um, all these kinds of things that produce our lives have to do with flow. And what I'll talk about is that the games themselves, that the point of bringing a game, an Olympic Games or a World Cup to a city, is to increase the flows to a city. So you want more information flowing about the city, you want more people coming through the city, you want more capital coming through the city. And so the general point of the games is to increase these flows that then have to go through circulation mechanisms. And so the building of infrastructure, the building of uh, fiber optic networks, the construction of tourist routes, pathways, etc. have to do with the ways that flows are channeled. And Milton Santos would call this fluxus y fixus. Right? Harvey could describe this as the fixing of capital in the landscape that then can reproduce other elements of capital. Right? And Foucault talked about the governance of circulations as being the area of the milieu. And so this is both a, a Harveyan, uh, Milton Santos, and Foucauldian reading of circulations. And so the construction of circulations, the governance of circulations, has to do with the way that things accumulate in the city, or in regimes of accumulation. And so here, these, these multiple circles indicate nested realms of accumulation, both at different scales, different kinds of capital that can accumulate different regimes of accumulation. And uh, in a Bourdieuian sense, the forms of capital can be political, symbolic, human, and also financial capital. And so the ways in which circulations are structured in a city have to do with the ways in which capital can be potentially accumulated. Okay, and so we have the flows that move into circulations, that then feed into the accumulation, and so the accumulation results in power. The accumulation of capital results in power, which then can be vectorized in a city. So you have also flows of power within a city that then can be channeled through political uh, circuits, which then can result in further accumulation. And this works not equally, but consistently across all forms of capital accumulation. And the mega event as a particular regime or a particular business model to accelerate accumulation or accumulation practice within a given political economy is what is interesting me in this talk in particular. All right, is that enough information for three minutes? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to talk about two particular ways. And the first one is about how one of the ways in which the event is intended to stimulate flows. And it's a concept that I call geoporn. Okay, so geoporn is this. I took this from the Rio 2016 website on tourism. I'll give you a second to read that lovely quote. Aproveitar o máximo tudo que o rio tenha que oferecer. And so this image is intended to stimulate a desire. It's intended to provoke people to a certain action. And that action is to buy a ticket, get on a plane, come to Rio e aproveitar. To consume this image. To move through this landscape and appropriate it for themselves. And so this image 
is a pornographic image because it hides behind it. Oh, sorry, sorry. The, the, the depiction, so pornography, one of the definitions of pornography is the depiction of acts in a sensational manner so as to arouse a quick, intense emotional reaction. So that seeing this image is meant to stimulate you to do something, stimulate you to come to the city. But what you don't see within that are the mechanisms of structural violence that are embedded in that landscape. And so in the same way that pornography hides une unbalanced relations of gender, of class, of origin, ethnicity, etc., in the very same way, the production of the city as a place of spectacular consumption hides the relations of violence embedded within that process of consumption, but within the production of that landscape itself. And as we know in Rio, these forms of violence are extreme and, diff and diffuse. From the pollution in Guanabara Bay, to the violent occupation of favelas, to gentrification, deforestation, forced removals, <coughs> traffic jams, uh, etc. So these are all embedded in the city, but are intended to be consumed as, as, a, uh, as a tourist event. Okay, so stimulating the flows to the city, getting the juices flowing, as it were, through an act of geoporn is one of the ways to get media interest, to get tourists, to get money, etc. And so the whole bid book, the entire uh, projecting of the city, the selling of the city, the pimping of the city to the IOC or to FIFA or to the international community through city marketing practices, can be considered an act of geoporn that is intended to stimulate the flows to the city. Once you accomplish that, you have to channel those flows, as I mentioned, through circulatory pathways. And within this, within the circulatory pathways that exist within a city, in order to accumulate from those circulations, you have what I call the extraordinary rendition of circulation. And this happens in two principal forms. One is a long-term rendition of circulation through the adjustment of circulatory pathways. The expansion of an airport, the construction of a metro line, the construction of BRT lines, VLT lines, teleferricos, the opening of, uh, of favelas through UPP, through occupations the construction of new car pathways. These are long-term uh, renditions of circulation that determine the future circulatory pathways of residents of the city, limiting their own opportunities for accumulation. And so we have seen in Rio the total capture of the circulatory pathways of the city through the Olympic project. And so the and for urban planners, this is interesting because if we think about planning as a way of determining circulatory pathways within a given regime of accumulation, we can see that the Olympic Games in Rio have determined the accumulatory possibilities of the population for the next 50 to 75 years. So that is the urban political economy side of this extraordinary rendition. And of course, in Rio, these are determined by very opaque and, uh, and collusive relationships between bus companies uh, and civil construction firms, etc. Things that we know about fairly well. So that's the urban political economy of the city, and that's what is serving the interest of those who brought the games here. In the context of the games, there's what I call the games render. And so, as Jules pointed out, the problem of the Olympics is not the tourists, they're the solution for the city. The problem is the people that live in the city. So you need to, in order to have the games operate successfully, as we saw with the World Cup in 2014, you have to get the local population off the streets. The population of the city is the problem. And so you have to extraordinarily render the circulation, you have to capture the circulations of that population so that others can circulate profitably or more easily in the city. So this is another form of accumulation by dispossession, one that is much more 
attuned to the ways in which people circulate in the city. And so in order to do this, there are a lot of different mechanisms. We can declare public holidays, which have been declared for a lot of days during the games. We have bank closures, government closures, road closures, we have limitations on where people can go. We have both exclusive access and exceptions to exclusive access. And so each one of these mechanisms that fits into the operational planning of the games can be considered an extraordinary rendition of circulation. And in the worst case scenario, as we saw on the eve of the World Cup final in 2014, you can do what the CIA does and extraordinarily render people themselves and put them in jail preventatively. And we see this advertised quite clearly on the websites of the Olympic Committee. Uh, this, I took this from the Cidade Olimpica website yesterday. This is showing you what, this is showing you exactly what circulation will be rendered from the population so they can be used by the Olympics on this day. And they have a list of how this will happen across the city. And so when we think about what is being taken, we're taking the possibility of the local population has paid for these games that lives in the city, that owns the city, we have excluded them from using their city. We have excluded them from their own possibilities of accumulation that have to happen through this process of flows and circulation. All right, so when we look at it as a business model, as a business practice, the transformation of these circulations, as we know in Rio and Brazil, the accumulation goes to a national scale. So you go, if, if these are embedded circles going from local or regional to national to international, the money has come from the federal government and the state government and gone to these national scale companies through this extraordinary rendition of circulation because they have built all these projects, auto product, OIS, etc. So these, and then that money will eventually, and so the, the use, the rent use of the city by the Olympic Committee will bring this money, so I'm going back to Switzerland. And so this accumulation regime is highly mobile. So it plops down in, every, in different places and it conforms to local practices, local accumulation regimes. And so the accumulation regime in Rio is different than that of London, different than that of Sochi. <laughs> But the ways in which these forms of capital have sedimented inside these rings is particular to the event, particular to the place. Each one has to be analyzed in its own context. But they function in exactly the same way on this macro theoretical level. They're all trying to create flows, to circulate those flows through specific channels so that these flows can sediment in particular places. So sediment, you could have accrued layers of cultural capital. You could have accrued layers of human capital. You can have accrued layers of political capital. And that's why I wore this blue shirt today in honor of our Rafael Chino, of our five, who was accruing, or had accrued, a lot of political capital until it's on gone sour for him lately. And so the ways in which these things accumulate determine who are the winners and the losers who are the semi-beneficiaries, who are excluded, who are excluded. But the model itself is consistent. The forms in which it takes are differentiated. And I think, for me, the ways in which this logic happens, both through starting with geoporn, moving through military occupation, and the construction and the reconfiguration of cities so that circulation patterns will inform accumulation practices, is really the perverse logic of the events, and especially in a place as unequal as Rio de Janeiro, as non-circulatory as Rio de Janeiro is, the conditions have been, been made that much worse, uh, here, and that is the real perversion of the Olympics and the World Cup in the city. Thank you.